It's all green crab. There's not a single other species in either of these traps. These European green crabs are aggressive predators that burrow into marsh banks and uproot beds where salmon live. They can destroy habitat quickly. Digging into eelgrass beds, experts say it's an all hands on deck situation. It's the most understudied potential threat to juvenile salmon. Okay, well, we just pulled up to another area here in Clockwood Sound. We've never trapped here before for green crabs, so this is a total test string. I'm gonna start crying. I'm actually gonna start crying. I can't, I cannot believe what, what's going on here. We agreed that we should do some preliminary trapping to see just how bad the green crab problem was. What we began to discover was we were catching green crab literally everywhere we looked for them. That really started to ring the alarm bells for us. European green crab have been in Canada about 200 years, initially on the east coast. They've been in Canadian waters on the west coast for a couple of decades now. Populations are growing fairly rapidly and becoming much more noticeable to coastal communities and First Nations. They can decimate mussel and clam and shellfish populations and they don't have any native predator, so they're not controlled. They're eating any bivalve, any clam, they're out competing native shore crabs. And then one of the big concerns for us is their risk that they pose on eelgrass beds, which is critical juvenile salmon habitat. When they're burrowing, either for protection or for hunting, they're digging up all that eelgrass. They'll wipe out a whole bed of it. You know, Tlaquit First Nation has really lush crab uh, grounds, large fans of uh, eelgrass and mudflats, a lot of great habitat, and uh, to have an invasive species that comes in that has less marketability, less meat on the animal itself, is just you know, a negative for everyone in the region. Eelgrass here is so vital to the overall ecosystem and the health of so many native species. Herring, salmon, killer whales, I mean, it really is important to protect. With green crab, we think about our eelgrass. Will it have an effect on the food substance that we always depended on since time immemorial? The European green crab came to my attention uh, roughly about two years ago uh, by Josh Temple from Coastal Restoration. It was really concerning. I had no problem signing off on this project to address the green crabs. To date, there's been over 250,000 green crabs that have been captured in like what sounds slack, a house at Hahuthli. Our project is a collaborative one with government, uh, host First Nations, as well as non-governmental organizations to test the efficacy of industrial style trapping as a way to learn more about green crab, but also manage and control their populations here on the West Coast. We have two trapping teams going out from Monday to Friday, one in Clackwood Sound here in the traditional territory of the Tolokwit and Housett First Nations, and the other team out of Souk Basin um, with the Souk First Nation. So every day they go out, they drop 40 traps, they catch green crab, they collect a lot of really helpful data and monitor the ecosystem that they're trapping in. The management project uh, uh, that Coast Restoration Society is doing is the first in British Columbia. So it's the first large-scale management project that we've, that we've had on our coast. It's helping us understand what it takes to manage the species on our coast, as well as to develop new techniques. This project is informing potential management options. When to trap, where to trap, what the, the effort's like, and whether that trapping effort is having effect at reducing the overall population, and therefore mitigating the impacts that we're most concerned about. We're really grateful to work directly in partnership with First Nations who have guided us in really important areas that are culturally and ecologically important. And then we focus on those areas to bring in that green crab control. And also through this project, providing employment opportunities to keep people of the host First Nations finding really meaningful and long-term work in those traditional territories. Our ancestral roles of you know, when a river wasn't producing, you know, our families would send a hundred 
warriors out to remove logs. Having employment that brings naturally people out to these watersheds is reinstilling that traditional role and getting us right back in there. This uh, project with the Green Crab partnering up uh, falls right under what we're, what we're stewarded to do. You know, a house it, there's only so many jobs that could be accompanied there. So diversifying is really what we're tasked to do. This is something that will never be managed on a local scale. It has to be collaborative and widespread for management to be effective. It would be really awesome to see a lot of programs exactly like this one, creating jobs up and down the coast, creating more information and a larger database about exactly what we're dealing with with European Green Crab. For all of our people that live in our territory, you're gonna have to look at, you know, the gifts creators given to us and how do we ensure those gifts will be there for tomorrow? That's what we're striving for.